In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a hyperlink to a ticket in a work note. And we're going to do that from a business rule. But if you stick around around about to the end, we're going to see how we can move that to a scripting thing. So in one of the latest videos I did, and I'll put an annoying link up there and one in the description as well. So if you haven't seen it, go and we'll check it out. But the point was we were syncing up work notes or additional comments uh, based on a kind of a parent child task situation. So in that case, it was a request item and a catalog task. And what we did, we used a business rule or we used two business rules like this one here. Um, the other one was on the catalog uh, task, of course. And we sync the work notes to look something like this, right? So it's pretty simple. Um, it's effective and it works. So the work notes, there's been a note added. But what I wanted to do is, is extend that a little bit. There was some things in that configuration I thought, well, we can do that a little bit better. We could, one, we can make the configuration a little bit neater. Um, yes, we did two business rules. Are we gonna to continue to do two business rules? Yes, but there is some duplication in our code. And there's one thing I don't like is when I have to re rewrite the same code twice, right? So I always try and look for a function that I can call. Got us thinking, maybe a script include, I don't know, stick around. Um, and we can also make that better from a user experience point of view as well, I think anyway. So what we're gonna do is instead of having a simple note that comes in here, we're gonna make that a clickable link. So we're gonna say a work note has been added but we're gonna say what the task is and we're gonna put a link or a hyperlink that we can click on that task and go to it. So without having to do a global search. Alrighty, so let's dive in, take a look at these business rules. So from last time, you can see I've got two business rules here and they look relatively similar. So we're gonna look at tidying that up a bit later. But for now, we're gonna concentrate on making those work notes a bit more fancy, right? a bit more reader friendly. Reader friendly? User friendly. Um, and by doing that, we're going to identify the record that the work note originated from um, and give it a nice little hyperlink that you click on it and it takes you to that rather than having to um, primitively type in the number in the global search. So let's go and take a look. Uh, um, first of all, what I'm going to do, I, I'm going to put that on a business rule just to keep it clean and then we'll put it somewhere else later on to so stick around and find out where. Is it a flow? Um, it's not a flow, by the way. It's not. So let's do that. So I'm going to admit to you, some of it's going to be typing, some of it's going to be copy and pasting because you don't want to sit here and watch me type. Um, so let's have a look. So we want to make Kerwana a bit more formatted. So what we're going to do is create a new function. So I'm going to create functions um, for this just to keep it clean and so I can explain to you as I'm going along. So in this one, we're going to call this function um, message. No, we're not. What we're talking about, we're going to call it format message. Okay. So in this, we're going to create an array. And we're going to pass in things into that array. And we're going to pass in three things into this array. There we go. Um, why didn't I do that first, actually? That would have been easy, wouldn't it? Right, okay. And then we can just slide in the stuff. So we're going to create an array. We're going to push some stuff into it and then we're going to return it. Okay, we're going to return our array. What are we pushing into it? Well, we're going to need to push stuff in from the source record. In this case, it's going to be current. And we're going to pass in the work notes as well. Okay, there's, I'm going to put in notes. Um, you'll see why I'm debating it in a minute because you could argue I don't need to do this, but... I'm, I'm, we're doing it anyway, we're doing it. Um, so what are we gonna push in? So we're gonna need to identify the source class display value. I can hear you screaming at the screen. Um, I'm getting stuff wrong, I've <laughs> my typos. Source get display value, what's that? We're gonna pass in the current um, record. In this case, it is the uh, catalog task. Um, so the source dot get display get class display value is the display value of the table it's on. So catalog task, long winded explanation. This is going to be the URL, the nice fancy URL. And we're going to put that there for now, and then I'll I'll show I'll tell you why in a second. 
Um, and the last thing we're going to pass into that array or push into the array is the comments themselves or notes. And that is a parameter that we're passing in. So let's do something with this URL. So we call this get URL. We're creating a new function. And in here, I'm going to cheat. Um, if you all just turn away for two seconds. Hey, there we go. I've just typed it all. Um, that's an absolute lie, but I've got an obsession with keeping that neat. Um, so we're going to pass in record. Um, in fact, to keep it to keep it nice and easy for you, and we're going to pass in source again, just so you understand it's all the same thing. You could call it whatever you like, to be honest, but we'll keep it as source. And then we're going to call that function from here, and then we're passing in source. So hopefully that makes sense. So what are we doing? We've got an array here that's being constructed. In that, in line 22, we're calling this other function. And what's this doing? This is, um, again, pause the video, um, screenshot this, or take some notes, or type it down and keep it in a script repository. I've used it loads of times. This is a nice little function to construct a URL, right? So that takes you or whizzes you out to um, uh, a ticket, okay? So we've got um, the uh, source get display value. So that's the display value of the ticket, um, the table name. Um, and then we start constructing the link of the, the ticket itself. And we throw that back into the URL a parameter. Um, parameter? Variable. Now, what you will notice, and, and it is equal to the HTML tag, the href in here. But what you'll notice, which is additional, is this little code here if you know html tags you'll notice um more often than not you'll see something that looks like that right so what we need to do is just wrap it in those code tags um just so it, it um it renders nicely in the activity log okay in terms of a, a hyperlink otherwise it'd just say a href okay and then we're returning that url back into the array okay so let's move those other way so we've do done those two functions now what so what we need to do is call those functions and pass stuff in so up here we're going to call that function and we're going to send it in current right current in this case is, is going to be source and notes in this case is going to be current winner okay so we're passing in current and then per winner and then we could call that we'll give it var ooh, message okay like that and then here, um, we could do um, message. Um, no, we're not actually. In here, what we're going to do is make this a tad bit more fancy. We're going to use this. I've done a video on that actually. Um, and we're going to pass that in. So I've done a, um, a video previously. Again, I'll put an annoying link up or something in the description if I remember when I'm editing the video. But in get message you can pass in if you didn't know and this is really clever you can pass in um dynamic variables or dynamic things into the message so zero in this case will be equal to um this so request item catalog task one in this case will be equal to whatever this is so the url okay and actually that's going to be the number get display value is going to be the number or the ticket number and number two is going to be the notes so this is actually going to say zero by substituted for catalog task so it'll say catalog task one which means the number of the catalog task so it'll be catalog task ctas1079 has been updated and then it'll just give you the notes that looks a bit nicer right and that's what that will look like so the last thing I think we need to do is look about how we can make this a bit more scalable. How how can we minimize duplicating our effort, right? Because in order to make this kind of logic, this nice new sassy logic work on our other business rule, which was for, let's just remind ourselves, request item, we could absolutely just copy that and then change these bits at the top here to, to match. Um, and that would work. But if anyone's ever worked with me, they'll know this, but I... I I don't like writing the same thing twice if I can help it. Of course, I understand there's context where you're going to need to do it. Um, you're going to need to, uh, you know, judge every situation um, at the time and, and 
have perhaps have a discussion of do you need to create um, the same function in in multiple areas um, and sometimes because of scope you might have to do that on waffling but my point is I always like to put it in some kind of centralized place that I can call it from other areas right so for example this get URL you might not just it, it might be something that you can use um, not just in these types of business rules for populating work notes okay you might want to grab it from other types of records not just request items perhaps incidents perhaps changes we discussed that on the last call Ugh. anyway i hope you're getting the point um so i'm going to put it somewhere central that we can call it so i'm just going to remove that so what we're going to do anyone knows what we're going to do well the first thing we're going to do we're just going to change screens to give us some more hey that's what i'm doing right give us some more space so we're going to go for a script include do love a script include so we're going to create a new one and i'm for the purpose of this i'm going to call it request item utils and then i'm going to give it a description i always like to you i always like to you've got to give them descriptions so i'm going to give it this one <laughs> uh, almost as good as this is some comments now what's the problem with calling it request item utils and this is how we've got to start thinking people so we've got this get URL and this format message. Um, it's just constructing an array, nothing fancy. These aren't specific to request item utils. And will, would we want to use this get URL somewhere else? Quite possibly, yeah. But would it be logical to call guest or get request item utils? It might be a bit silly. People might not look for it there. Um, just a thought. You might want to have a centralized utils that you call from request item utils. And that's how you should start thinking about stuff. Um, I love these debates, by the way. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these uh, functions. We're going to pop them in there. We're just going to change the format. And sometimes I don't remember the format of the functions because they change depending on whether it's client callable or not. Um, and so how do I remember? Well, quite simply, I look at something else that's there. Or just look at this initialize function at the top, right? It gives me the format. You just cast your over there, we put our colors in, and I'm obsessed with keeping that neat, so that's what we will do. What else do we need to change? Well, this format message function, if you remember, is calling the one underneath it, this get URL. So what we now need to do is just say this. So this script include this entity, this thing that we're on, dot get URL. So this, we're already there, dot get URL. And that'll do for us. So now we need to um, initialize and initialize that script include and call the function from uh, business rule. So I'm going to copy the API name and we are going to simply, we'll put it here. I'll, I'll split it up and make it, uh, make it easy. SI, SI, bit of SI. So we'll initialize our script include like that. And then we'll quite simply say script include dot function. So we've now put that function somewhere else. So we've got to tell it it's somewhere else and this is where it is. So script include um, dot message. Uh, you could do belts and braces like, um, you know, the things like if, if, if this is null, then insert like a default text or something. You could do that. But let's save that. So the last thing we want to do make sure it all works because we don't want to throw something over the fence to test us to then come back and tell us it's not working never do that so let's go to item uh, let's go and play with the one last one i did it was a catalog task wasn't it the business rule um was it uh, uh, yeah catalog task okay so now what we can do is go test some some notes here and pray that it goes up because we've never been in demos <laughs> where we've gone to show something and it stopped working. Here we go, right. So now what we have is a nicely formatted um, message. So now you've got catalog task, which was our zero inside the array. We've got the task number, which is the link, which was our one inside the array, and then has been updated with and here are the notes, which is our number two in it. And when we click on that, it'll launch us out to the task. Okay, how nice is that for someone that's assigned to the ticket? They can just click all around the tool. Um, 
it's almost trying to make it easy for them. Okay, so there we have it. We've now got a catalog task which talks to a request item and back again if we need to. But it's using the hyperlink this time as well. That's the difference between the last video in case you weren't keeping up. So I hope you found it useful. If you haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing so. There's no hard sell. If you have and you haven't yet, just hit the bell icon. That's it. Yeah, smash the bell icon. You'll get notified when I upload new videos just like this one. Until next time. Um, Happy low coding.